Welcome everybody. Uh, today is uh, day two of uh, Mark and Nate judging and uh, we're excited to kick off with uh, the remaining teams from uh, from this uh, hackathon and uh, the, the demos that we're all excited to see. So um, before we kick it off, I want to do a quick intro for how uh, this event was set up and, uh, and uh, what we're going to expect today for our judging. Uh, this is our first event for 2021 and we have 490 hackers uh, from 50 different countries uh, and spanning across 17 different time zones. So there's a whole spectrum of skill sets, developers, uh, and, and a diverse audience working on interesting problems uh, in this space and problems that they are excited about. And I will be seeing a, a subset of them today um, on this call. Throughout this whole project, uh, the hackathon, we have 120 projects uh, that came about um, uh, at the end of three weeks, and uh, we get to see about 15 today. And uh, what I'll do is I'll quickly cover the format of this call. Uh, we're gonna give every team eight minutes in total, no matter which the first four minutes are going to be uh, dedicated for a video demo. And, uh, and the remaining four minutes will be for Q&A from our judges. And then we'll also do a quick uh, a three or so minute break after every four teams for the judges to talk amongst themselves and, and discuss any uh, uh, questions or comments around uh, the projects. Um, and depending on how things are, are gonna go, we're gonna have a 10 minute break halfway through, uh, through this event just to give everybody a break to stretch. So in terms of how judging is designed, uh, each team will be rated on these five categories. Um, they'll be looked at from how technical, original, and practical a, a project is, uh, along with uh, how they thought about the UI and the user experience and the developer experience uh, for, their, for their hack. And then we also recognize that uh, they may not be the perfect and the, the best way to look at everything. So we also have a, a catch-all that we like to call the wow factor that lets us account for anything that we have missed. And, uh, and before we kind of kick off with our very first demo, I want to just remind everybody that this is not a competition. People are here to learn. Uh, we're not telling them and they're not aiming to all become businesses. So the, the intention and the goal for this is to make this uh, a feedback session and give uh, constructive feedback that can help everybody um, get better in, in this space and continue building. So um, without further ado, uh, the, the, our judges who are going to be doing the hard job of, uh, of giving feedback to all of our teams, I want to welcome Layton from Pool Together, Daniel, who is an independent uh, personality in this space uh, in the DeFi, <laughs> deep, uh, DeFi landscape, and then uh, Peter from uh, 1KX. Um, they'll be here with us for the next couple of hours talking to all of the projects and uh, sharing their thoughts. So uh, without further ado, let's move on to our very first demo and that is Team Whiskey Coin. Um, so I believe they're here and uh, I'll let them kick off with uh, their screen share. So welcome. Great, thanks so much. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. My name is Jasper and I'm here with my cousin Tillman. Thanks so much for having us. And we are here to demo Whiskey Market Maker. Hi, my name is Jasper Deegans. I'm standing here at Stone Barn Brandyworks, a craft distillery my family started about 10 years ago in Portland, Oregon. We created this platform, Whiskey Market Maker, to give investors and whiskey enthusiasts a chance to connect with craft distilleries and invest in aging barrels at the bottle level. Mm. The traditional model for investing in whiskey is focused on large, opaque whiskey funds rather than craft distilleries. At Whiskey Market Maker, the barrels are managed by the distilleries who make it, and each distillery retains 30% of each barrel sold. This increases transparency between the consumer and the producer, and increases trust between the digital and the physical. It's not only a great way to discover new, unique, tasty whiskeys, but it's also a great way to benefit from your investment. This is the Whiskey Market Maker platform. I'm just going to connect my wallet here. And this is our homepage and it's a general overview of how the platform works. So if you're a distillery, you can produce a barrel of whiskey, list it with us and we will generate uh, and mint ERC-1155 tokens that represent each bottle in the barrel. Then the whiskey enthusiasts can come along, look at the barrels where we have offered, buy individual bottles from that barrel. The fees for storing the barrel in a bonded warehouse go into an interest bearing account through Aave. And those, uh, that interest is then returned to all the users once they redeem the tokens for bottles at the end of the maturation process. And then the tokens are transferred naturally to the user as the new proud owner of different whiskeys. So here are some examples of barrels we have listed, some different types of rye. And if we're interested in, let's say the dark roast rye barrel number 55, we can see some general information about this whiskey. 
This one looks like it's going to age around four years, maturing in 2025. Some flavor notes that it's coffee, chocolatey, stouty, so it sounds pretty delicious. Down here is a price projection. So right now the price is $44.67 per bottle. Looks like the fully matured price will be around $63 and that's set by the distillery. And we have $5 in lifetime fees per bottle. Uh, if I wanna purchase bottles, you can see I already own 40, uh, but there's 190 left. So let's say I really like this whiskey. I think it's gonna be a great whiskey. So I wanna buy maybe five more. I can head over here, click purchase, about $250, and then we convert that to ETH using Chainlink's price feed, uh, both on the front end and also verify that on our smart contract. If I just hit submit here, it looks like our transaction is gonna be about 0.14 ETH. I'm just going to confirm and let that go. As we wait for uh, the transaction to be confirmed on the COVID test network, we're just gonna look at our dashboard and this pulls in kind of our current holdings. As we saw before, we had 40 bottles of rye and once that transaction confirms, that should jump up to 45. And then we can look at some basic stats uh, in how we've used the platform. So it looks like about $3,000 uh, are staked in barrels. Okay, the transaction just confirmed. If I refresh this page, we can now see, hopefully this should update. To now we're at yeah, $3,200. Uh, we have 0.17 ETH that are gaining interest in that Aave account. And if we hold our bottles until full maturation, we should have just over $1,000 worth of gains uh, for just holding that whiskey. So that's pretty incredible. We can also see the actions we can take on each of our barrels and our, the, the tokens we own. What most people are gonna wanna do is redeem. Uh, and that means transferring the tokens, uh, exchanging the tokens for the actual bottles themselves. And looks like we have to wait another 1,455 days for the <laughs> barrel to reach full maturation. But once that happens, you can either exchange the token to pick it up at the distillery itself, or for distilleries based in the US, you can ship to select states. Uh, and that's mm. Whiskey Market Maker in a nutshell. Amazing. Uh, well, congrats on going first. And uh, it's also amazing to see just a hack that's uh, from, a, from a real problem in, in your day-to-day -day life too. So. Um, I'll let our, our judges kind of come in with any comments or questions and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Perfect, thanks. Um, yeah, awesome guys. What was the, sorry, sorry Peter, <laughs> I just jumped in. Um, did you, you're using ERC, what, what was the reason behind the token choice? The ERC, I think it was 1122? Uh, uh, 1155 and that was because we wanted to make it kind of semi-fungible so you can uh, transfer in batch. So for instance, if you wanted to buy 10 bottles, you wouldn't have to transfer once for each individual token. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So if each one was like a 721 NFT, you'd have to, okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We'd have to do that one at a time, but this way you could be like, yep. say I want to buy 10 bottles and, and, and do that on one go. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Peter. Yeah. Just to clarify, how do you settle the ownership of the bottles? Like, is it physically sent? Um, is that wrong? Like, so yeah, the physical ownership and that's, that's, we have to bridge the digital and the physical. And right now, right. Like there's a lot of different regulations for different areas, but we're based in Oregon. And what you can do is you can uh, go to the distillery itself and actually do the exchange there. So you would redeem and then you'd pick it up. You can also send to select states and uh, depending on your distribution network, like for instance, right now we have, for some reason we can also ship to Japan. We have a distributor in Japan. So certain areas are available, but those uh, depend on the distillery's network. And so if we expand to more distilleries, it would vary, each one would have, when you buy, it would say, okay, here's here's where we can ship to, or here's where you can pick it up from. Okay, I was me. curious about the, uh, oh, sorry, Peter, if you had any other comments. No. Uh, so I was curious about the price projection. I saw there was like this linear, uh, uh, linear function. Uh, what, yeah. What's the reasoning behind that and how, how does it work? Tillman, do you wanna, do you wanna feel this one? Yeah, so the distillery just lists the price that they're going to sell the final bottle for. And then we actually, at our distillery, we sell unoaked bottles. So we had a pretty good idea of what it's like. So, for example, we sell an unoaked rye bottle for about $30. And then we sell that final rye bottle for about $55. So we just figured it was a linear function um, from when it's put in at the very beginning up until the date it's taken out. Yeah, we considered some other pricing projection functions, but we just wanted to emphasize and incentivize people to invest earlier rather than later. So if you come in earlier, you get the bottle price at less and then it actually matures. So the whiskey, I mean, you can imagine a barrel is an interest bearing account. You put something in and it gains value. 
So we just figured we'd, we'd have that appreciate linearly now, but maybe we'd experiment with other uh, functions, appreciation functions in the future. Interesting. And is there also a concept of like supply and demand where, or is each bottle like cost, cost the same, whether you're like the first or the last buying it? So from the platform, we imagine that it, uh, every price would be the same per bottle, but as with everything, there's going to be a, a pretty rampant secondary market, we would hope. Right. So there you would have, uh, hopefully some of those sales would be transferred back to the distillery. So depending on, on how you transact, uh, maybe like 5% of all profits would go back to the distillery, but the secondary market would have a second layer of pricing that would be more right. variable and flexible. Have you guys seen the Z, the Z NFT, the Zora NFT standard? It's kind of cool because basically you can set for the NFT every time it sells a certain amount of the selling price goes back to the creator. So you can mm -hmm. sell it, set it like it goes back to the distillery. It might be a cool, cool thing to look at, but Very cool. I really, I really, really love the idea. I, I would definitely want to use it. I, um, I would tokenize the barrels if you're going to do it so early. And then I would tokenize the bottles if it's already at production. Cause I don't think, yeah, but tokenizing the barrels would also be really cool, but I would definitely buy a tokenized high end premium whiskey bottle that I could have yeah. shipped to me. That'd be sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The one downside of tokenizing the barrel is it would be kind of a bit more expensive and it's, it's a bit opaque on how many bottles are actually going to yield from a barrel because you have uh, product loss, like the angel share is kind of infinite. So some, some of it, right, evaporates. right. But then you could try to, you, you don't know how much someone's going to get at the end. Cause you start off with like, uh, let's say it's a, it's a 50 gallon barrel, but at the end, it actually goes down to maybe 40 gallons. Right. And then you right. also have to dilute it with water depending on what strength you want. So there's a lot of intricacies, but that would be a really interesting project to, to do it at the, the barrel level yeah. and the bottle level or have two tiers maybe. Yeah. Well, nice work, guys. Yeah, cheers. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you yeah. all so much. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We learned a lot uh, and, and had a great time. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Congrats. And uh, yeah, hopefully this uh, this becomes more uh, more mainstream. So I'll have that too. So, uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, just give us a ping uh, if once, you, uh, once it's ready for others to check it out too. Right, cheers. Cheers. Well, Thank you very much. We are ready to move on to our second demo, and that is investing party. So uh, they've just been promoted. And uh, whenever you are ready, feel free to kick off uh, with your demo. Vera, are you uh, are you there? Waiting for you to uh, start the screen share. Hey, sorry. Hey, uh, Gabby is going to share his screen. Perfect. Uh, here is Guy. Yeah, Gabby, we can. Yeah, go. yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna present the the video now. Uh, Gabby, we're not getting audio. Would you mind uh, trying to check in with the sound button? Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah, now it's uh, um, inspired by Uniswap's big air. For the hackathon, we decided to um, work on a tokenized airdrop with vesting platform um, inspired by Uniswap's big airdrop. Um, we wanted to uh, kind of riff on that idea and make it possible for lots of people to, to do that, that sort of thing. Um, while also adding a vesting component so that um, people that receive these tokens have a longer term kind of alignment um, with the, the token promoter or issuer. Um, and 
uh, we've got all these uh, vested token airdrops vesting parties. Um, so let's take a look at the demo here. Um, and this is from the perspective of somebody that's going to host a party. Um, so they'd go to the um, host dashboard and they'd see other, other parties they could browse through, um, but they'll also see this create a party. Um, and it's pretty simple here. Um, we have a spot to put a token address. Um, I'm going to take one that I have handy here. Let me just pause that. Um, and we can figure, configure the vesting duration. Um, let's say we want the tokens to vest over 10 days, the cliff duration to be one day. This is uh, kind of the first day where tokens start unlocking. Um, and we also configure an amount um, of tokens to kind of unlock up front for, for users. Um, so if we actually made this 100%, it would be like a traditional airdrop without vesting. Um, and then we upload a JSON file. I'm just going to upload a standard one um, or an example one that we have here. Um, but essentially, the file is just going to contain a mapping between addresses and amounts. And these are in, in hex, so we're going to, to make this um, human readable. Um, uh, but right now, it's in hex for convenience. Um, but we have our accounts and our balances. And then we start the party. for this transaction to mine, which I'll cut out of the video. Um, and um, once this uh, once this transaction goes through, it'll have created um, kind of a party page. Um, we won't have funded it with anything, so this will just deploy a contract. Um, once it's deployed, um, we'll have to fund it and deposit tokens. And we decided to make this a separate step in case um, a community that's running as a DAO or something like that wants to set up the the distribution and then use like a vote or something to send tokens into the contract. We wanted to make sure. Mm. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for that video. A uh, super interesting concept, also super timely. Back. So uh, I'll, I'll let our uh, our judges uh, take away with any comments or questions. Yeah. Hi. Thanks. I absolutely love this. Uh, like it's it's so simple, but like you don't understand like so like in when like a project uh, a token network really um, raises funds in the space, right? This is like pretty standard, right? Like all the fundraising terms are often includes like you know a cliff and like vesting terms, right? Either unlocking month by month or block by block, right? There's a few parameters that are that vary from like different financing deals, but. Usually it's all like, you know, as far as I'm, uh, I understand most teams deploy these vesting contracts pretty manually. Uh, mm -hmm. And for the other, the, the counterparty, right? It's actually like pretty hard to kind of, uh, you know, like actually verify it and also and not verify, but like uh, see like, you know, the vesting itself, right? And the different emissions potentially. So I, I could actually see this being super, super useful for like a lot of projects. Um, yeah, like, so I really think it's like just something that could be really, really useful. Yeah, yeah I really like yeah. what Peter says. Sorry, who I Go ahead, Daniel. Right off. Go ahead. All right, yeah, so I, I echo what Peter says. I think um, vesting will become like the, the new standard for, for these kinds of token drops. Um, I, I saw like with the graph, they, they did some vesting, and I think, yeah, more people will definitely do this in the future. One question for you Are you planning to open source this since I think uh, it'll be? really useful to teams that yeah. wanting to build on top yeah. of Yeah, this is already in, in our uh, community repository. And there are some other configurations like uh, like Peter mentioned to best in batch. And we only configure it as a default one day, but uh, we can also, uh, we also have like the option to configure like uh, best in weeks uh, periods right. or, mo or months period instead. Yeah, and I, I'd uh, encourage you to also consider blockly vesting. You know, like traditionally we have like monthly vesting, but in crypto it's like why not, right? So might as well do it blockly. I think it's pretty cool, and people are always kind of amazed by, by that. Like, wow, you can vest per block. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know um, what what you guys are planning. I, I really like the idea too, and I think um, I actually like it for post, like like for you, like after a token's already done an airdrop. I think it would be really interesting to do like additional airdrops, but on a more like targeted basis. 
Um, and I think like for go to market for you guys, if you wanted to, the place you should start is comp. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but compound has had a lot of discussion because they didn't do a retro airdrop. And so there's been a lot of discussion in that community about doing one. And they've been talking about like, how could we do it in a way where the tokens don't just get dumped. And so you could go to them and say like, Hey, here's a tool. You guys set whatever parameters you want. And like, let, let's, um, yeah. Yeah. So I, so I really like that idea. Um, yeah. That might be a good go to market for you guys. What, what are you guys, what are you guys planning to keep working on this or what's your plans? Yeah, we, we were planning to keep working and we were a bit uh, time restricted with the front end and we were able to finish the whole thing. But the plan is to also, like you say, allow for several vesting parties to be uh, done in a project uh, with with a different configuration if you want. And yeah, the, and yeah even allow a strategy, kind of strategies to uh, help people to get the JSON file with all the claims that they need to, to submit. For example, even generate one from Twitter or generate one from Discord or whatever to make right. them really easy to, to, to get the, the user base. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think broadly speaking, every project's trying to figure out how do you get ownership into the right people's hands. And I think this is a really good start towards solving that problem. And there's probably a lot of interesting design space on top of this too. Yeah, and one last thing that I'm not, I'm not sure is if mentioned is that this uh, vested token are, are also NFT, the, the whole bunch of NFT, the, the whole bunch cool. of vested, so you can transfer them hmm. as a as a the whole best block. I mean the whole best. Uh, I might even try to use it myself, my own uh, tokens, and like you know just like you know invest it myself. It's, it's like it's uh, also a fun tool in that sense too. Cool. Amazing. Well, uh, congrats on, on demoing this. And I think uh, it's, it seems to be a consensus that this is extremely useful and hopefully this gets in the hands of a lot more existing and new projects. So- uh, Yes, yeah, thanks guys. You know, Thank you very much. It was really awesome to participate on this. That's, uh, that's great to hear. Hey, thanks. We're ready to move on to our, our third demo and that is OFSS.eat. So, uh, I see Jordy, you're here. Whenever you're ready, feel free to pick up your video. Hi, this is JP Oled. I'm the solo maker of the Offset project. The main goal of Offset is to make the blockchain more sustainable by offsetting the user's CO2 emissions. With Offset, the user can calculate in an easy and quick way the Ethereum transaction emissions and offset it. Because let's be clear, we all love blockchain, but we should take care of our planet too. In instance, a single transaction costs 26 kilowatt hour and only 5% of Ethereum energy comes from a renewable energy source. In brief, users can calculate his emissions, purchase carbon credits and earn of token in reward. Of tokens is mm represents a subtraction equivalent to one ton of CO2. This project uh, is in beta and only deployed in the Coban test network. Let's see how it works behind the scenes. Users can interact with offset smart contracts with two different ways, by purchasing of token directly and for each token, one ton of CO2 will be offset, or by depositing the rate in the offset pool. This pool works with Aave to generate interest and once a month, mm -hmm. all interest is spent purchasing carbon credits and distribute the equivalent to all pool participants. Now let's see in action. First, we connect with MetaMask. Okay, uh, now we can see some stats like uh, our balance or address, the number of transaction and the uh, and your impact, uh, the number of kilowatt hour or, or number of CO2 uh, spent in Ethereum uh, transactions. Users can also uh, add different packs like validator, if you are an Ethereum validator, or even uh, offset the whole year of emissions. Then uh, they can offset all these emissions by purchasing of tokens. Let's see. Here we have all the information and this number, the, the price is calculated by uh, Chainlink Oracle that 
give you the Ethereum price. If the user has a node and uh, like there's Ethereum Ether and there's a message and we can purchase the, this amount. Okay, we, we are in Coban test network or uh, they can deposit their DAI mm. in the CO2 DAI pool. Mm. Uh, the, remember, the, the interest will be used to purchase carbon credit and obtain off tokens. Okay, in the future, the plan is to delegate the purchasing of real carbon tokens to a DAO where off holders could vote and select which project purchase the carbon credit or help other projects to fight the climate emergency. Hope it like it and thanks for everything. Hmm. Awesome. That's really cool. I um I really think you did a really, really good job of like packaging it and quantifying it and creating like the different tiers. The only thing I was a little confused about is like I understand the die you deposit the die the interest. I understand that. But the but the top thing where you're buying if I'm buying an offset credit, it's a token, but that token should be burned or something, right? Because like, I guess, to, to like once I buy that offset credit, what's happening? Yeah, um, the project is not finished. I have a lot of work to do and yeah, yeah. I'm learning, but uh, the main goal uh, is to then uh, purchase uh, the carbon credits and store the invoice in a interparliamentary file system or similar to link with a token and maybe uh, I have to figure out, uh, but maybe the token is not transferable because I don't want to make like a speculative in here because uh, I want everybody purchasing as many tokens as they can. And maybe uh, then burn this token to prove that this, this token is not used um, more times yeah okay yeah gotcha yeah that, make, that makes more sense i understand there's more still more to do but you did a really good job on the whole on the front end of it and the packaging of it all and in helping quantify it thank you yeah plus one the product design was uh is really great um and I, I guess you know i'm curious like you know how how are you inspired to you know uh build this well um uh, like one or two years ago, I created, I co-founded co a climate change uh, group uh, of developers to fight or to finance projects that fight the uh, climate emergency. Now it's uh, like a, a Discord with 1,000 people, uh, designers, uh, developers, and all kind of technology stuff. And I want to because my girlfriends tell me, well, this blockchain is very good. But there's a lot of energy involved, involved. And I don't like it. And I think about how to offset this energy. And in the future, maybe like uh, other protocols or DeFi projects could uh, offset their wall emission and uh, we'll, we'll create a leaderboard to show which projects are more sustainable and I don't know, this is my future goal. Mm. But we should do something for the planet too, because yeah, there's a lot of energy. In, in, well, for sure, uh, and the Ethereum 2 layer will improve this, but um, for, for now. I really like the name Offs. Offs.eth, Offseth, Offseth. It's a great yeah, name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I do have a question as well. Um, how do you uh, like peg one offset token to one ton of CO2 credit? Uh, now uh, the, the, the price is like uh, $15 for one ton of CO2. But a smart contract, there's a function to, to change this uh, number, the price. Gotcha. And it's just an oracle for that. Um, another question. So CO2 is like one way to combat climate change. What about like, have you thought about other kinds of uh, ways of quantifying maybe like uh, 
surface area of the ocean clean or something? Yeah, mm. uh, the main we delegate the the voting power to to the DAO. The, there's a selection of different projects like ocean or uh, forest uh, uh, forest saving or or animals or something like this. That then the the off token holders could decide which project to, uh, will own. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Well, Jordi, thank you so much for this thing. And it's uh, great to hear that we have uh, a thousand people who are uh, developers tackling climate change. So hopefully there's a lot more ways for, uh, for this to uh, be useful for yeah. people. That's incredible. Thank so, you. Um, continue working on this. A pleasure. <laughs> Uh, great. So uh, we are ready to move on to our next team, and that is Project Better. So uh, see Chris and and the rest of the team is, has been promoted. So whenever you're ready, feel free to go ahead. Projects in the Ethereum ecosystem lack a standardized way to collect user feedback. Often, users choose the shortest path, requesting features in social media, which results mm. in unnecessary admin overhead. Once we have collected user feedback, we want to automatically signal the need for development and donation resources. And again, current tools don't integrate well into existing developer flows. This becomes obvious with issues that are well known and needed by a lot of users, like this example of extending MetaMask hardware wallet feature. While community members with wide enough reach can actually coordinate this on Twitter, imagine if anybody could do this anytime, anywhere. And ideas come up almost daily on crypto social media. From impactful experiments like building a decentralized Twitter to crowdsourcing community and education and memes like paying for a Twitter hashtag emoji. To simplify realizing all these ideas, we build better. An easy to fork platform allowing anybody to express ideas, fund and finally build them. Let's take a look. First, a dev project forks our repo to set up a better dot subpage, for example, better.av.com, which mirrors all issues from the project hmm. repo and allows users to submit and vote on issues. Then anyone can select, for example, a feature request or translation request or security audit and fund it with ETH or AVI tokens to collect interest on the pool. And finally, after implementing the feature, the developers who solve the issue will be paid out from the contract. While any update on the pooled funds will be reflected on the project subside and in the GitHub issues powered by our subgraph. So summing up, Better allows devs to collect user feedback and prioritize their roadmap to receive funding and to discover new talented contributors. And all they have to do is fork our repo. To be fair, this is still a prototype, mm. though we do plan to build this into a working product as we see the need for this in the Ethereum ecosystem. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for that demo. And it uh, seems like it's a super useful utility for everybody to, to get collective feedback. So I'll let our judges take off with any, uh, kick it off with any questions. Yes, please. Yeah, so um, I think it's pretty cool that uh, uh, you're kind of bringing the uh, incentivization to the platform that people are already building on. So like rather than building like a complete mirror that needs to get repopulated with all the issues, I think it's really cool that you're just like forking the, the repo. Um, one question, can you like elaborate on how the payout happens? Yes, so basically we're using the uh, Bounties Network contracts, so it would work the same way. So you, you can press a button on a website. The website is generated from the issues, right? And um, pressing that button pays out whatever tokens are in there. For example, AVI tokens. And it's using Bounties Network? I'm not familiar with that. Uh, Bounties Network, uh, I think that are the contracts that are used by Gitcoin. They sort oh, of gotcha. co developed it. So would it just be whoever creates the bounty is, is the person who decides if that bounty has been completed? Um, right now it works that way because it was easy to implement that way. But um, in the end, I think you always need like sort of a judge. So we're yeah. thinking that the admin repos, because it's sort of this this ecosystem anyway of, of that um, project whoever forks our repo, right? 
So probably the admin of that project would be like the judge and always when there's something happening that either the funder or the developer is unhappy, then that guy would decide. So we just in the contracts, there's like an issuer. So that would be the admin who could change yeah. anything. And yeah. eventually the idea is that we could even make the owner like a DAO or the collective community that's around a certain project would be able to vote. Um, like what are the criteria for paying things out? Uh, because yeah. in theory, yeah. you could even create issues that aren't necessarily like one-to-one -one tasks or bounties. You right. could say, hey guys, I want to fund a marketing campaign for Aave V3. Uh, everybody's going to contribute like, I don't know, 500 die to it. Um, and then as people create uh, assets for this marketing campaign and as different parts of the marketing campaign are rolled out, you can choose to pay out different parts of this holistic uh, bounty to different parties. And maybe like the Raid yeah. Guild comes and says, hey, we're going to do this kind of launch, like a video and a Twitter campaign. And somebody else says, I'm going to design your graphics. So you could have different parties being paid from the same pool. Um, yeah, and something that makes else sense. That want, sorry. Yeah. And something else that we'd love to do um, in the next version, but we don't have it currently, is find a way of pooling all of the different um, assets that have been contributed for a subproject and then gaining interest on that pool. And then the interest can either be reinvested back into the project. Um, so for like a treasury for f future issues, for example, or perhaps some of it can go back in the form of a tip to the developers if they did a really good job and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like it. It's, it's, it's definitely cool. Um, and yeah, like you said, there's a definitely an emergent need for it with like what you're seeing on Twitter. Would people be able to like contribute to bounties and vote for bounties without having to create an account of any sort? Yeah, yes. uh, the idea is that we want to be able to do it either directly uh, like via a wallet uh, anonymously and then a bot would post on your behalf on GitHub. Um, yeah. And we're also looking into decentralized IDs. Uh, we're thinking of moving like the social aspect of everything onto ceramic um, and leveraging three bucks or whatever becomes a three bucks uh, to allow logging in from a variety of different platforms or doing it pseudonymously. Awesome. I would check out Penvala. Um, the interesting model where basically it's you buy Penvala tokens and that's the way of buying into the grant ecosystem and people receive tokens and they can cash it out. I wonder if that, that model can actually be used to govern this micro ecosystem of like bounties, right? And like, you know, you, you talk about there's one admin uh, for these bounties, what if they're basically driven by how like, you know, token vote of this like micro Penvala system, right? Just for support. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's something we're thinking about. and. It, on the one side, you could even have a project using its own govern, governance token um, right. to do this, and also perhaps rewarding uh, either funders or people who are uh, executing against bounties uh, with some of the governance token. But you could have a meta token, like you're saying, like Panvala, or if we eventually create our own token that would have a worth across projects uh, as opposed to just within a specific subproject. Awesome. Uh, well, this is great, and uh, good to see uh, some uh, some of you join us again for this event. And uh, Thanks again for, uh, for presenting and hopefully uh, you get to continue working on this. Nice, thanks for the feedback. So uh, with yeah. that, we're gonna take a quick four minute break for, uh, for our judges and then we're gonna resume with uh, the continuous loan offering project. So what I'll ask is I'll let the judges turn their videos off and, and, and uh, mute themselves and join us on the other chat from, uh, from the program.
for everybody. Right. All three of us are here. We'll uh, resume with uh, the next demo. So uh, we'll just quickly get uh, the next team promoted. And uh, for, uh, for this team, I am uh, going to be playing their video. And uh, as soon as they join us on, on the webinar, I'll kick off with their video and they can be there to answer the questions. All right, so looks like everybody's here and I will kick off with your video. Hey, we are Team Porgy and this is what we built for MarketMake. Our team members are Flip, Anatoly, Kirill, Yevhen and me, Viet. So we built a marketplace where investors have all information on startups to save time on researching gain voting power when investing, and secure investments. Alice starts the fundraising process for her new venture Celica. The startup is stating that the duration of development is one year and divided into three batches of four months each. If the investor gives one ETH, Celica will send back one sell token, so the investor has the right to vote. Now the Celica startup is in the Porgy marketplace, and Bob sees it and decides to invest. Later on, Felix and Jenny have also joined the party. Porgy locks 300 ETH and deposits it to Aave, so the startup will gain additional profits in the future. Let's dive deeper. First, 100 ETH unlock for Celica's first batch and the results have been good. So everyone voted yes to continue the second batch and another 100 ETH plus Aave interest unlock for Celica. However, the end outcome of the second batch have been mixed, so Bob and Jenny voted no, and the project is over. The remained mm. 100 ETH plus Aave interest rate from depositing are exchanged back to investors. Let's take a closer look at our app. It is very simple to start a fundraising campaign with Borgi. All you need is to set some on-chain parameters, such as project duration and money and lock rules. Then, simply start the pre-sale. That's all. Funds are already being raised. Are you an investor searching for a valuable project? Then you're really lucky to bump into the Poggi. Becoming an impactful shareholder have never been that easy. Just search through the projects out there, waiting for a wise investor. Choose those that really looks promising and invest. Now, you can be sure that not a single way will be spent without your permission. When the pre-sale is finished, and the min cap is reached, the first serious amount is sent to the startup team and the rest is deposited to Aave. Now it looks like the series has finished, but it also seems like the project hasn't been doing anything for all the time. So vote no for the series and contribute to project cancellation. After the project is cancelled, simply withdraw the rest of your precious funds and receive additional compensation due to Aave deposit. Under the hood, Minimi is used for voting mechanism, Aave for depositing ETH, our funding mechanism is designed from scratch, one inch exchange contract is being utilized for trading startups tokens, and the graph schema for on-chain indexation. So for future work, we plan to add support for Ethereum-based tokens, rework UXUI to a more user-friendly state, add more flexibility to the investment model, finish graph integration to UI and off-chain data to IPFS. Amazing. So uh, that was a super cool demo and I, I like that. Uh, and noticing at the end. Yeah, awesome. Um, that's really cool. So it's one question to clarify. Is it is the actual money, is some of the money that I'm sending going to the project or is it just the interest earned on the money that I'm sending, if that makes sense? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, as we have stated, uh, you're sending the money and we are only releasing the chunk of your money to to the series. Like the series one is unlocked and you get- Gotcha. Yep, so this is how we, uh, we thought about the idea. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I was just trying to clear, clarify that. All right. Um, 
Yeah, okay. I'm curious, uh, how do you handle dispute resolution, right? Let's say, you know, a milestone uh, or like, you know, some sort of like series is like, uh, you know, it's like, let's say a product's not like delivering, right? How do, how do you, you know, like identify, you know, withdrawals uh, that are fair or unfair, et cetera? Yeah, Hlip, you can go ahead. Uh, so I can try to explain the question. Um, <clears throat> uh, when it's like global voting and uh, when most of the investors vote for no, the project is canceled. And it's uh, we currently don't have any any recovery mechanism to kind of dispute this uh, cancellation. So currently, if the project is canceled, it's canceled forever. But mm -hmm. later on, that they can be disputed if needed. Yeah. Right. I could I could see some like conflicts of interest, mostly because it it, it could it could. I guess it's like I guess it's all about the social contract between the supporters and the and the creators. Uh, yeah, and yeah. one one other option to really explore is like maybe some sort of written contract, and then you know arbitration through a protocol like you know um, Claros, right? Where it's like basically it's like a paid you know kangaroo court, in, like internet judge court, right? Where like, random jurors are selected, and they you know really like the drop down to little adjudicate on you know soft human like uh, governance issues, right? Uh, Aragon Court provides this. Um, yeah, yeah it's like, uh, there's a lot of space for DAO things, and we actually like implementing kind of a DAO here where everyone mm -hmm. votes for a project and investor kind of do control, uh, put some level of control regarding the project. They, we actually plan to add more things like uh, investing, uh, propose new things, and uh, kind of propose new votes for additional features for the projects to implement, kind of this stuff. Like, there is a lot of play. But place to improve for improvements here but like we just for three weeks we decided to build like just this uh like straightforward model so in, yeah. in the model that you have you raise like a certain amount and then each series will disperse like some some percentage of it is that correct like it, it and what i'm getting at is like is it possible to do a future raise with this platform like do a second ico sort of like a second offering Yes, we have a concept of uh, season and series. So uh, when the project is created, you first create a season and you can do any amount of series there. And uh, on every series, like uh, some portion of uh, total funds are unlocked to the project. And any, in, at any point, you can just simply uh, create an another season uh, and to raise a, additional capitalization for your project using uh, prices from one inch. We actually gotcha. implemented them. So we can check this out on our GitHub. Very cool. Nice. Um, and I have another quick question. Um, so like ICOs seem to have like quieted down quite a bit. Um, do you foresee this being like uh, maybe causing like a resurgence in ICOs or, or like have you been seeing lots of ICOs lately? Um, at least like in my in my little bubble, I haven't really seen or heard of any ICOs these days? It's just like airdrops mainly. Uh, not really. Like we, we think that uh, DeFi is still like the, the future and it's a place for any kind of investments to go on. But ICOs has like that uh, reputation and uh, like they started amount of them started to decrease uh, later or like in recent uh, time. So we we think that this model just need to be rethinked and, and introduce a new way to actually get money from uh, from a lot of investors on on DeFi space. Awesome. Well, thank you so awesome. much for presenting. And uh, hopefully uh, people start using this model and uh, actually introduce uh, delivering projects before <laughs> getting money. Yeah. Before, Congrats, guys. Congrats. Uh, thank you for the time, guys. Cheers. Yeah, thank you. With that, we are ready to move on to our next team, and that is team uh, Project Vcred. So I see Vijay is already here. So whenever you're ready, feel free to kick off with your video. I'm going to present about Vcred, a project submission for the hackathon. The goal is to implement transient short selling. The problem we are trying to solve, what is short selling? Short selling is essentially trying to sell an asset, expecting that the price should decrease and then to buy back the asset at a lower price point. The benefits of short selling is that there are potentially bad projects where uh, the price is expected to go down 
it's also currently missing in DeFi except for very few projects like Open. On the other side of the picture, it could lead to infinite losses if you're not careful. So maybe a short term short selling or a transient short selling where we take advantage of very high token volatility, which is currently present in uh, the DeFi marketplace. So how to short an asset in DeFi? Now that's where the power of credit delegation by Aave comes into the picture. So if you look at this flow in this picture, so first some depositors, someone deposits a certain amount of tokens into the margin contract. So the margin contract will be like a pool of tokens, let's say wrapped ETH for example. The trader on the left tries to initiate a short sell. So he thinks for example that wrapped ETH price will go down. The short seller contract then borrows the wrapped ETH tokens on behalf of the margin contract and it immediately sells the token or shorts it in one inch for example and in this case the one inch API was used and a main net fork was done. The token once it is sold is converted to a stable coin so for example the wrapped ETH could be converted to USDC and then as the dotted line shows the USDC that is a stable coin can be used to buy back the token or the asset which was shorted which was wrapped ETH and this asset is then paid back that is the delegated credit is paid back to the margin contract and the position is closed. So the first step is to deposit the money into the margin contract and for this we can use the deposit collateral method in the credit delegation, the RV credit delegation and so essentially we are now depositing 10 wrapped ether from that uh, contract into this uh, margin contract. After that amount has been deposited then we can approve the borrower. This will be the borrower contract. So the borrower will be in this case a short seller and the short seller is now allowed to give an, uh, or is given a line of credit of about 10 wrapped ether. Seller then uh, withdraws the tokens. This is about uh, three wrapped ether and to build the call data using the three wrapped teeth which you've got and also the token addresses. And once you've got the call data, then to call the actual short sell, that is to perform the short sale of the three ETH using the call data and information. And this transaction is comes back into the wallet. And as you can see, three wrapped ETH was converted to about 4,992.615 USD. And then essentially we just wait for the price to go down. So the price which is at this point had just gone down to like something like this which is about a 3% drop. And essentially we just wait for this 3% drop or a few 4% drop and then sell the USDC that is swap the USDC using the one inch protocol and uh, get the money back as wrapped ETH. I gave like a more developer oriented presentation. I hope it is okay. Yeah, love no. it. Um, super, super useful. Um, uh, how are you thinking about like, how do you, I guess, you know, how, how are you thinking of like automating all these like contract calls uh, from your end? Yeah, exactly. So it's more uh, like a, I was, uh, I was using Node.js, but then I wanted to now use uh, Python script. So that's the thing I was working on. Uh, the only problem is, uh, you know, there is slippage. And uh, due to the slippage and also due to the non-deterministic nature, you know, because when you go to the one inch and then when you're doing it, it's non-deterministic and that's where it breaks a bit. So that's uh, one uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, opportunity for improvement from my side. So I'm still working on that part. But the whole motivation behind it was the GameStop. Uh, that's why. So I was initially having a different idea to work on this project. But yeah. just during the hackathon, game shop exploded. So that's why I wanted to do this short selling. One idea. Uh, so I think you should ch try check out Gelato Network. What they're trying to do is basically automate DeFi contract calls, right? So it's like you can basically set like uh, contract calls uh, based on like if this and that logic, right? And then they have the, they're trying to incentivize this network of bots. So that might be useful. Got it. I don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah, this is an awesome project. Um, 
So, so I'm not very familiar with short selling. I don't, I don't really do it at all. I mean, I know what it is conceptually, but compared to the other tools that exist, like, like opium or sorry, opium, like open, um, uh, or whatever, like wh why is this better? I guess. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to say that. So as soon as this game shop thing happened, right. I went to yeah. the thought, like, you know, Dogecoin, for example, I right. wanted to short it at that time because right. I thought like, ah, there must be some coins which are overvalued. And it was not right. easy. For me. So just purely from a developer or a user perspective, I struggled to short it because it was more Got like it. an option, uh, not like a sh actual short sell. Got and it. Yeah. So there's no permissionless short selling. I got it. That makes total sense. And I, I wanted that too. Actually, there's 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 been times when to there's been some tokens. I'm like, oh, I really want to short this token, but it's like no way to do it. So it's permissionless short selling. I like it. That's very really cool. So using uh, Aave's credit delegation, right? So how does uh, the liquidation work? So the basically the short sell, right? You have to close the contract. So let's say the price goes down of a wrap deed, for example, by 3% or 4%. Then you buy the, you, basically the USDC to wrap deed and then close. The right, more so like what happens if the price goes up though? Like it, it goes up too much and then. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's a transient short selling. You have to keep it only for one or two hours. And if the price goes up too much, then from a margin contract, you have to close the position. Just similar to the C5 centralized finance world. So like the delegator would uh, have to, like the user would have to give ad funds to the uh, delegator's account and the delegator would potentially have the risk of getting margin called or like getting liquidated. Yeah, that's why it's a line of credit. Yes, it's a line of credit gotcha. and then you have the risk of getting margin called. Same like cool. C4. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, like, yeah, obviously you can short sell just like manually clicking, but this is nice because it like packages all up together. And I think it'd be cool if you had like some quirky uh, website that's just like, I don't know, put your money where your mouth is .com or something. And uh, yeah. just in quirky, <laughs> really, really too short. When, uh, a lot of these like uh, decks is like, you know, go on L2 and just like, you yeah. can you know, go at it, right? Okay, I will do that, yeah. Great work, it's cool. Congrats on, on this, Vijay, and uh, hopefully uh, you, your domain name is available. Uh, perfect, so we are ready to move on to our cool. next demo. Thanks, guys. And, uh, and that's the tokenized asset donation, so looks like the team's here. So whenever you're ready, be sure to kick off with your video. This is Tokenized Asset Donation, TAD, a charitable giving application integrating Aave. TAD enables users to take full advantage of the Aave lending pool while providing motivation to donate a share of their accrued interest to a charitable cause of their choice. Our motivation for this project was to build a new system for charitable donation, something that is simply not possible in the current financial ecosystem where interest is not earned continuously, while also to encourage savers to get more involved with socially beneficial projects. So how does the DAP work? Users interact with the TAD smart contract by depositing ETH and specifying a percentage of their interest earnings they would like to see donated. The smart contract sends this to the Aave lending pool and holds the corresponding A token for the user. Interest is sent recurrently to the GiveETH.io, a free and open source platform allowing its users to start and donate to charitable blockchain projects. The TAD smart contract works by tracking user balances and giving rates with CRUD-like operations. Every time a deposit, withdrawal or give function is called, individual balances are calculated using the overall growth in the contract's A token holdings since one of these operations was last called. I will now give a quick demo of the DAP. When users load the DAP, they are prompted to sign in with their MetaMask accounts, something I've already done. In the bottom left, they will see information on how to get started with the, with the application, but assuming we know this, we will navigate to the lending page. Here, the user can specify an asset to deposit to the TAD smart contract, an amount and a percentage of their interest they would like to see donated to a charitable cause. We will select Ether. 
0.01 and uh, we will donate 50% of our interest. We can confirm this with MetaMask and we're done. Once we've deposited, we can navigate to the dashboard. Here, the user can keep track of their deposits and account information. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to connect up all the variables here, but that is something we'll look to add in the future, as well as a list of transactions. So how would we improve our DAP and what work do we still have left to do? Currently, giving events are triggered manually. This is something we would want to do continuously and as often as possible. To avoid, to avoid high gas fees, we would specify a threshold ratio of the total transaction value to total fees paid to ensure that most of what users donate make it to their cause. Currently, you can only give to give ETH.io. We would like to expand the project to deploy further smart contracts for other mm. projects and even add a feature where users can choose their own projects to donate to. As indicated by our name, tokenized asset donation, we would like to expand the donatable list of assets while also tokenizing real world assets, such as, for example, gold. That can also be used to accrue interest and donate. Finally, Given high gas fees, we believe using something like the Matic network to enable more continuous giving with lower fees would also be incredibly useful. Very cool. Uh, like, I think, yeah, I think it's a, it's definitely a very important, like, kind of uh, idea in terms of like lossless, like, you know, giving. I think like would be really cool is like figuring out, you know, how you can kind of take this what you've built and like maybe pair it with like existing, you know, social or distribution network where there's like a lot of activity happening, right? I've seen like a lot of projects in space try to like, you know, build uh, not only the tech and product, but also try to build the community and audience. I think, you know, like you said, you know, give it might be like a good place to kind of start and integrate with just food for four. Cool, thanks. Yeah, no, this is really cool. I, I, I've always really loved this idea of like lossless donations and it's like sort of been done, but like, it's just hasn't, for some reason it hasn't really picked up or, or like fully worked. And so I think it still is a problem worth solving for sure. Um, what, uh, yeah, I, I guess, so, so this would be it would just, just to be clear on the flow, this isn't, this is not like redirecting interest from my existing Aave deposits. This would be like, this would require me to, deposit into like Ave for the first time. Is that right? Or is there a way to build this where you could like say, if I already have a, a deposit sitting in Ave, I could like start redirecting my interest. I'm not sure if that's technically possible. Uh, yeah, currently it's, it's separate. Um, you'd have to deposit into, into our application rather than using your gotcha. existing. Uh, gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. But I mean, I guess with trans, if you batch those transactions, it could be reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Just a thought, um, it made me think about uh, like tax efficiency. So like a lot of rich people like to donate because it, they can like offset their taxes and whatnot. Um, have you thought at all about like tax efficiency or like designing the protocol in such a way that it allows people to like maybe trigger taxes when they want to or trigger donation credits, whatever, when they want to? Uh, no, we didn't, we didn't actually think about that angle. It was more about trying to get kind of um, uh, just improve kind of like the contribution to, to socially beneficial projects from the public. So at the moment, um, if you give to, to like a charity, um, charities often kind of ask for kind of bigger kind of lump sum donations, and, mm -hmm. you know, which kind of put pe puts people off. Um, so just having something that is kind of continuous and, uh, you know, smaller and more manageable for the average person um, mm -hmm. is kind of what we're aiming at. Gotcha. Very cool. Great. Well, if there are no more questions, I want to thank Harry and, uh, and uh, Maximilian and Carl for uh, demoing this, and uh, hopefully, this uh, has a lot more.
that we can do in this space. So yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. This is awesome. Thanks, thank guys. Okay. Um, so next up, we have uh, Sublimate uh, Finance, and team is here, and I'll be playing their video on my end. So I'll kick off uh, the video in one second. Welcome to Sublimate, a DeFi platform that lets artists, open source devs, and content creators accept continuous financial support from anyone in the form of streamable tokens. For this demo, we've set up a mock data set on the Kovan testnet featuring our favorite creators in the crypto space. Let's jump right in. First, I'll connect my wallet, which already has some streamable ETH to give away. The Defiant has been putting out some awesome video content lately, so let's show them some support. I'll choose to send them 0 0.005 ETH every day over the next five days. Sublimate will use the average block time of the past 30 days to determine the corresponding stream rate and tokens per block. Let's approve this. And now we are subscribed. Now, whenever a block is added to the Ethereum blockchain, the streamable ETH balance will decrease while the creator's earnings increase. We created our own subgraph on the graph to provide analytics for creators in real time. So we can see the tokens that they're earning across all their subscribers. And in the spirit of paying it forward, we can also see who this creator is supporting as well. Let's find one more creator to support. Stani here is doing a fantastic job maintaining the Aave protocol. So let's stream him some tokens. Note that his wallet address is connected to an ENS name, so it shows up in the URL. Let's say I want to stream him a total of 100 DAI over the next month. In this case though, since I don't already have streamable DAI, I'll have to send 100 regular DAI to mint it first, and from there I'll be able to start my subscription. Great, now you might ask, how can I make a creator page for myself? Just head to the dashboard, fill out your profile, and sign a message with the address you want to receive your funds. Now I can share my profile link so my fans and followers can support me anytime they want. Thank you, Daryl, for the great demo. Sublimate works with a custom version of the ERC20 contract that enables token holders to directly subscribe to another address. A wrapping contract lets you convert your native assets to their streamable counterpart. We were really lucky to have some great sponsors and partners. So we did our best to think of unique ways to integrate as many as we could. We have Chainlink as a price oracle with the graph to compute the value of subscriptions in USD and estimate their duration depending on the block length. Matic to reduce gas fees for our users and provide a frictionless experience. Then Aave. Users can manage their capital more efficiently, creators can generate interest on their subscriptions and supporters can subscribe with only their yield thanks to the new Aave V2. We've also designed the widget that enables uh, integration easily on any web page for newsletters, portfolios, or communities. The website also comes with a fully fledged dashboard that lets you customize your profile page and get insights on your community activity and metrics. We have so many ideas that we want to implement and problems that we want to tackle with Sublimate. We're preparing the second version of Sublimate set for July 2021 with new functionality and integrations. This remote hackathon was a unique experience for all of us. Our team is global and it's comprised of myself and Blagoy, who worked mainly in the backend and contracts implementation, I mean, as our designer and product manager, and Daryl, who did amazing work on the front end and UI. We would like to thank you so much for listening to this presentation and hope that you will enjoy Sublimate as much as we enjoyed building it. We're very much looking forward to onboard as many users in the DeFi space as possible and together help make every second count. Thank you. Awesome, guys. Um, did you guys use, uh, use Sabler 
for the streaming? Are you using those contracts, like a fork of those, or did you just build something of your own? Right. So that was a question that uh, we we thought about in the very beginning. Uh, so we know that Savvy uh, enables the creation of stream uh, of streams, right. and then you know you can create a stream. It's kind of an escrow contract, and then and then uh, the receiver has to withdraw from the contract. So right now we've kind of implemented a new ERC um, a new token standard uh, that enables streamings directly on the contract itself. Got it. So there you don't have to call no need, anything. Yes, there is yeah, only a need nice. for for subscribe to someone and then this someone yeah. can directly use this money without having to call withdraw or anything. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 that's, that's nice. That's a nice enhancement. I like that. Um, yeah, it's really cool. I like, I mean, the UI obviously is really, really good and that that's probably one of the strongest things. And I think, um, I, I guess my only like feedback comment would sort of be, I'm not sure, like, I think it's a really cool idea and I think it, the, the website's really good. I'm not sure if like the streaming part of it is essential. Like, I think it could be just as cool as if it, if it was just sort of like give one-time grants to people. Um, so I, I don't know, that's just like a, that's just a piece of feedback to th think on, but I think it's really cool. Right, thank you very much for the kind words. So that obviously exists, you know, in the form of Gitcoin donations or that kind of stuff or directly sent to addresses. So our idea with Sublimate is that you can set a recurring subscription that would yeah. never end. For example, yeah. you can send 10 die every month to someone you love. Yeah. Uh, or enjoy their work, but the subscription will never hand, end. So every time you top up your account, the subscriptions, all the subscriptions that you have, they keep going. So you never forget to reward your people. To your That's life. cool. Yeah. The way to augment it is like, you know, you could actually subscribe a tokens, for example, right? Uh, so like, exactly. it, like general yield, it's, you know, you, you get the interest, maybe, maybe it's like you, you earn uh, on top of it, right? But it's also a way to commit, right, to a creator without, you know, like committing, like, let's say you know, I, I want to commit to a year's worth of subscription, but maybe mid-year the creator wants to stop uh, working on it, working on his like, you know, newsletter, uh, right. you know, or like, or so on, right? So that's one use case I can see. Yeah, very cool. And that's really smart, the, the best, like the, the token design. Uh, like, Thank you. That's really, really cool. Yeah, I actually uh, wanted to use Sabler for something, but I didn't use it because of that reason, that the person has to call it. But right. yeah, Daniel, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just want to say it's an amazing UI. It really feels like a complete like product that you could like put out in production. It's like, you know, obviously there's improvements to be made, but it, yeah, it's like really nice and polished. So congrats on that. Um, also, can you elaborate a bit more on like how the funds get pushed, like the, the token design that you were mentioning? Right. So basically, we're overriding the balance of function of the ERC20 uh, with, you know, an incoming rate for, for the receiver and an outgoing rate for the sender. So we also store the block number at which the last balance was updated. Uh, and then we can compute the balance of which is just, you know, the last balance updated plus the sum of the rates times uh, the time that was elapsed from the, from the last update. Kind of like an extrapolation. Oh, okay. So that's in the stream ETH contract. So the, the user is receiving stream ETH or like stream DAI. That's in all of the contracts. We have uh, basically an abstract uh, streamable token contract and then two wrapping contracts, one for the ERC20, so wrapped ERC20, and all the, another one for wrapped Ethereum. So does the user receive like the stream token or do they receive like the underlying ERC20 at the end of the day without doing anything? Right, so they receive the streamable tokens that they can directly reuse to to make another subscription, or they can use the underlying <laughs> asset by uh, withdrawing. But the idea with Sublimate okay. is that this standard becomes, you know, more and more used so that people can directly pay with streamable tokens because there is still the transfer function, just like in the regular ERC20. Gotcha. Very cool. Amazing. Really polished and well done hack, and congrats. I nice zoom backgrounds, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's nice too. Well, the detail that you put into everything that you presented. So, congrats again, and hopefully, we get to use this uh, fairly soon. We love you too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Perfect. So, uh, next up, we have uh, Safe Keep Web 3 Bridge, and I'll be playing their video as well. And then after that, we'll be taking another four minute break for our judges to deliberate. But uh, I see the Safe Keep uh, Web, Web 3 Bridge team is here, and I'll kick off with your demo. Hello guys, my name is Adebayo, I'm 
representing safety plus blueprint. The name of our project is safety. And uh, I'm going to show you what we are trying to solve now. So in the crypto world, the issue of people losing their private keys is quite common. And then once you lose your private key, that's the end of your token. And also the case where by someone dies and <clears throat> doesn't divulge his or private keys to any of his family members. That's the end of the token. So what we are trying to solve now is to make sure yes, the asset solution is to create a special kind of wallet where it's more deposited. And interest is the, on the fund that we lock in the coin. So this is the safety landing page. And like I drew my camera. And then we are in. Yeah. Try to deposit some funds into the account. And then a backup address has been updated here. You can see here. And you can manually update it anytime you want. So we can do um deposit some die to the contract so die so now we have an extra hundred die in the contract but normally now so the pink feature this, this is the magic feature of the uh safety safety wallet you don't see yourself using your wallet for the next three four months but then you want the contract owner to know that okay, if you have access to your wallet, you're, you're still alive, just simply paying the wallet. So, anytime the contract owner checks if there are old users who have not been, so if the contract owner sees that, the ping tells the contract owner that okay, even though you are not depositing any um, Ethereum or DAI at the moment, you are still found for your private keys or. can also update your backup address anytime you want. Maybe you feel like, okay, that one is not safe or you want, just want to change it. And you really just update that one is Voila. Now we're going to move on to the admin page and then we switch over to the admin, to the contract owner. So here we switch to the contract owner now. Then all users can see the balance and the contract balance and the contract die balance. Also the ADI balance. But only the contract owner can call the deposit into the AVI lending pool function and the withdrawal function. And this is where the uh, contract owner checks for users who have not done any transaction or pink the contract for a while. So uh, since we have only at 35 die now, we're going to try to Deposit it into uh, a real lending pool, but uh, it's not quite wired up now, so it's going to fail at this point. So, some that's going to fail, but then we'll get our fix. So, yeah, that was the basic idea. So, when we deposit um, die into the Avi lending pool. I'm going to get it die back from Avi. That will be displayed here. So after you check, uh, when you check the old things, then you see that there are users who uh, haven't pinged for six or eight months, and can just to send their funds. Interest the fund, their fund might have yielded back to them. That's the basic idea. The wallet that gives you a second chance and also interest. Thank you. Amazing. Very cool. There you go. Looks like everybody's here. Yeah. Uh, hi. Maybe I'll also start off with a, with a question. What, uh, what made you uh, think about this idea? Uh, to to work on and how did you decide to do this? Um, so there's a popular story about the German guy that lost access to his um hard drive that contains I think two hundred million dollars worth of crypto. Yeah. 
And then we thought about, okay, what if um, maybe he saved it in a place where uh, he could get a second chance at, at retrieving his funds, not just because uh, you lost your private keys, then that's the end of 200 million. That's, that's not fair. So that's the uh, basic idea behind that. Definitely a very important piece. <laughs> with, with the safe keep contracts, would you be able to uh, still interact with like other DeFi applications or just general crypto applications uh, from that wallet? Uh, yeah, we can interact with, uh, we plan to interact with um, the Avi lending pool for now. So, so we deposit the fund, the um, ERC20 tokens into the lending pool. So the users can get gain interest on their um, on their funds. So it's not just the wallets that the normal wallets. You also gain some. Right, but let's say I, I wanted to like buy some. Like let's say I want to use Uniswap to trade some tokens. Can I do that from the wallet that you provide? Uh, no, not yet. We couldn't integrate that. We tried, but uh, just did it. Okay, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's a it's Maybe, a cool. Yeah. Uh, like yeah proof of concept i would say and I, I definitely think this uh problem space needs more work to be done i think there's probably so many tokens that are like death locked um yeah and it's yeah. something that i've like started yeah. to think about like how do i or you know if i lose something like, how do i retrieve it or whatnot yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i would i would i would love to have something like this for my wallets i think it would be now i don't know i don't know if there's a way technically to build it where like I could still use my wallet in the normal way I'm using it, but I could also have this feature. That would be really awesome. I'm not yeah, sure if that's, yeah. but uh, it's definitely a really good problem to solve. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I think for, for that to be possible, I think you have to choose um, a part of your funds to be logged. So you don't just transfer now because of the uh, yeah. interest that you have yeah. to lock. Uh, the money the, um, to get, um, yeah, fund you have to lock in the lending pool. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. And then one one quick question. So for the pinging, does that do you does the ping happen if I do a transaction automatically, or do I need to do a transaction specifically just to ping? No, anytime you deposit um, okay. data or yeah. die, got it, or we or okay. withdraw, you automatically ping the contract. Yeah. So, but got if it. you don't want that's, to do any transaction nice. for, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Well, awesome work on it. I think it's a it's a it's a cool it's a cool project. Solves definitely solves a real problem. If I could uh, suggest like a, a potential alternative approach, I've like just thought about it a little bit, not like fully baked out. But um, so one of the things okay. about these wallets, like you uh, you want to be able to to use them for whatever you're you're used to using them for. Um, so maybe one approach would yeah. be to set uh allowances for like all the tokens that you or maybe every single erc20 token in existence just like set an allowance to it an unlimited allowance to some smart contract and then that smart contract like handles the the dead man switch logic i think that would be a, an interesting uh space to explore yeah yeah uh, we're looking to that thank you amazing well we'll hopefully get to continue working on this and if there's anything uh people will communicate to, to help you build this or, or help you uh, debug or suggest other things, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us on Discord. So yeah, yeah, thank you. And uh, with that, we'll get a uh, quick uh, four minute break for uh, for our judges. So we'll just ask all of you to uh, join me on the other chat for a few minutes and we'll resume in about four minutes. So thanks everybody.
All right, everybody, we're, uh, we're going to get ready for resuming all the, the demos. So if our judges are ready, you can turn videos on and we'll continue to the next team. Awesome. While we're here, okay, so it looks like all of our judges are ready. So uh, next up is Tuatara. So uh, Rob, whenever you're ready, feel free to share your video. Yeah, this is looking okay. Uh, yes, that is. Cool. Here we go. Hello, Marketing. This is Future Rob presenting Dark Labs' hack. Tuatara is a market and culture watch streaming bot, an audiovisual program of what's currently happening, synthesized straight from the chain. As the crypto space grows, we are building tools that help you keep track of this universe. Tuatara is an attempt to deliver live news and information from the block utilizing the graph, reading smart contracts, and presenting a mix of what is going on. Verifiable, decentralized entertainment. The script written by the smart contracts and the news sourced from blockchain transactions. During Market Make, we concentrated on showcasing Aave's protocols. On the left, we have a scroll of lending rates, similar to what you would find on Aave's homepage. In order to exhibit Aave's flash loans and give more information on the lending protocol, we have aggregated their data, presenting the total amount by currency via circulating bar graphs, capturing a high-level view of how these services are being utilized in the moment. Moving forward, we intend to include a highlight reel of the largest transactions and explore visualization techniques for viewing these contract interactions. There are few tools as synonymous with the traditional financial industries as the talking heads. Walk into any modern trading firm, day trader office, franchise bank, you name it, and there's a good chance you might hear or see them. As we move forward with making the market, you should consider these opportunities to reinvent these tools and make them better. There are countless market streams, but they are mostly just streams of existing platform candle charts. In the near future, Please be on the lookout for Tuatara on your preferred streaming platform. This will be a curated showcase of projects such as Aave, as well as diving into the arts and culture. Once enough segments are created, we intend to expand the stream to a web platform, a segment builder, viewer, possibly even integrating personalized streams from your address. Thank you for your time and happy hacking. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll let our judges uh, ask you the questions. Uh, I'm curious about the name. What, what's the, how did you come up with that name? Um, so the Tuatara is a, oh, is a lizard or a reptile from New Zealand that survived and it has a third eye and it's the only type of it. Uh -huh. So this is a, third eye to sense and it's a primordial third eye which was kind of taken away from all the other creatures but kind of like the television and talking heads Turatara still kind of has that ethos of you know past world yeah um this is really really cool i really like it a lot and it's very creative it's very different than any, a lot of the other projects and i just i just think it, it's it's like i was just kind of laughing watching it because it's like you know, obviously you have Bloomberg TV or whatever, and this is like our version of it. And it's like totally wacky and weird. And I really love that. Um, how far did you like, act, because it's hard to tell, like you could have obviously just sort of like Photoshopped everything. Like how far did you actually get on like building this? Like, so that it actually, yeah, more is, like, is that just like a visual prototype or is it actually something behind it? Yeah, so I'm actually streaming like four React apps and cool. an project and some video projects so it's like a really cool collage kind of multimedia thing and i have it on a server instance a gp gpu instance so i can kind of go ham um but yeah i mean it it exists it's close it has it's infested with bugs here and there but it it, it kind of does its thing and i like i like nice. the idea of like real-time crypto markets tv it's cool <laughs> And how, how are you pulling the that. data? You mentioned uh, the graph, but are you, uh, sorry for interrupting. Are, are you uh, pulling anywhere other than the graph or is all, all the graph? Right now it's mostly the graph. All the numbers are CoinGecko. I know like 
once I dive into Chainlink, I feel like that's a bottomless opportunity in this space, just because then you have weather and then you can get real prices and you can even have, you know, gold. <laughs> um, so yeah, I definitely want to go full aggregator as much as I can with it. But for now, it's only the graph and a couple APIs, DeFi pulses in there. Um, mm. Yeah. How did you find working with the graph? It's great. I mean, I like, you know, sometimes when you get into doing like some of the harder math of where you're converting and everything, it's already there for you. It's like almost when you find yourself going too deep into it, someone's already done what you need, <laughs> especially in Aave's case. But yeah. It, I like the branding. Uh, it's like, you know, it reminds you of like the crypto lizard brain that we all have, right? That we were trying to turn off, but I guess this is one way to like delegate that, you know, to external source. Um, so I like the analogy. Uh, yeah, uh, really, really fun. Thanks. I really yeah. like that you, you're having a Twitch stream. Uh, I think that's a really good idea. Um, and also there's just this thing that I've, I've been saying about analytics tool, I feel like they're kind of lacking in crypto. Um, and my thesis for the reason is that like anyone who has really good analytics will just trade on them and keep it pr proprietary rather than like putting it out in the open. So there's like a huge need for like better open analytics tools. So I think it's really cool. Yeah, I agree. And I think what's really cool too, something I talked to Trent about was like make web platform and then like looking at Z Zapper uh, the DeFi Pulse project, where like you could literally build this from your own uh, address. But I guess my time is mm -hmm. up. <laughs> thanks. Oh, well, uh, Rob, uh, thanks so much for for this demo. Um, this seems Thank you. awesome. I'll check this out right after judging ends today. So uh, great. Um, and with that, we are ready to move on to our next theme. And uh, that's Gearbox and Mikhail, uh, looks like I see you here. Um, this is an interesting project uh, as well. And uh, I know uh, maybe you'll cover this in your video, but uh, I'd encourage you to tell me, uh, tell the judges about the, the background and how this came to be. So I'll let you kind of take on that and uh, feel free to share your video whenever you're ready. Yep, I'm ready, so I start.
Great. So uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of closed captioning there on the video uh, that sort of walks us through this thing, but uh, maybe just for our judges, uh, maybe uh, it'll be useful for you just kind of give a couple lines on kind of the go and the inspiration behind this thing and we can jump into the questions. Ah, so, 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 so yeah. Um, so the idea is very simple because now if I want to trade with margin or something like that, I should go to a uh, lending protocol like Compound and Aave. And for example, use my collateralized asset to get another one. And then I go to Uniswap for trading. It's a very simple idea to combine lending protocols and DEX protocol in one. So if you want to deposit money, you could put money on Jerbox. And if you're a trader, you can put only 25% of your money and get a margin. And uh, so you can trade on Uniswap on any protocol using this Jerbox interface. So you have the same uh, prices for different DEXs, but Jerbox protocol contracts that all tokens are whitelisted and in the future it would be solved like a DAO. So uh, pool owners could decide which tokens could be accessible for traders and which are not. So if um, the protocol computes that your portfolio does not cost more than uh, a special threshold, uh, so it uh, automatically be accessible for liquidators and they could liquidate your portfolio for premium. So it protects totally the funds mm. of depositors. And at the same time, you are free to do all operation on first class DEXs like Uniswap and SushiSwap until you do not cross this risk management line. But as a trader, you do not own your money when you trade using Jarbox. Jarbox controls all this stuff. Hmm. So the uh, initial uh, collateralization is 25%. What is the liquidation threshold? Uh, I think uh, it's just an MVP. So I consider a risk model and borrowing model like an hour and probably depends on asset, but I think it's around 10 persons. So if uh, you cross a line that the, <clears throat> your total portfolio are going around and I know 20 or 10 person of this, this your uh, assets are accessible by liquidators. So they should have profits and probably it requires a more uh, wise and smart thing because this current uh, gas cost, uh, it depends to be valuable to run the smart contract because it was cost $50. So you, it depends not only the person, but uh, some fixed value also. Hmm. That's cool. So, so, so it seems like, so it seems like you're, you're counting whatever they're taking out, whatever they're taking out the margin for in buying, you're sort of counting the assets that they buy as part of their collateral. You're sort of treating that as like their collateral. So yes. you're using that. Yeah. 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 That makes so sense. The, yes. Idea very simple. You put 25% of your money and you have a uh, four times more, but you should trade using my interface and all Got funds. It. I store it. it on my smart contract and right. it continuously compute that your total balance is more yeah. than liquidation price. Right. If it cross the price line, liquidators come and sell right. your portfolio. And right. it's really very gas efficient if you compare to use a few protocols like Aave plus uh, Uniswap, yeah, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. It's a good idea. It's very, um, yeah, I think it's a very original idea. Yeah, it's a really good idea. And I'm curious, like, Thanks. any thoughts on why this hasn't like, doesn't exist already? I don't know why I checked, but I didn't <laughs> find yet. <laughs> Probably it exists. You can go to Jerbox Finance and it's totally work for testnet. Probably there is no front end for liquidators, but the contract is written. And uh, of course, some huge job in the future, but it works and you can check. Hmm. Yeah, so. It's cool. It's a great job. 
Yeah, and thanks for Kartik for inspiration because I was stuck on Saturday, but he said, yeah, do something. And I decided, yes, I'm going to do something. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it That's was great. really a nice journey. I'm really happy to see you uh, here and uh, presenting this. And uh, obviously it seems like everybody thinks this is a great idea and uh, you mentioned it's already live. So uh, we'll be sure to make sure that others know about this too. Yeah. Nice. All right, um, so okay. here we go. And uh, with that, we are ready to uh, move on to our next team. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks and have a yeah. nice day. Yeah, bye-bye. See ya. So next up we have uh, Price Oracle Connect. Um, and uh, I think there are some uh, additions to this, uh, to this video. So it'll just be closed caption, but uh, whenever you're ready, feel free to play the video. Hello. My name is Lucas Pilar, and it's my project for Intel Group Bow. Oracle Connect is a collection of the plugs and websites that help you to use .NET to fetch your links in the Argo Oracle to get information about the price. I made two plugins for Nintendo that help you to use your link in the Argo and .NET platform. It's the Fiesta Plug, Nava. Now it's possible to read other data provider contract and price oracle in .NET. It's a demo show to you how to find the list of the tokens using the Ava data provider. And this code show to you how to find price deposit and borrow information. The next is Chainlink Plug for .NET Ethereum. Thanks to AMS, it's easy to find Chainlink Oracle contract under us. This code shows how to find the listed price. And this code shows how to find specific price using raw ID. Last, I did the website that was all the plugins. When clicking the launch that, the website will find all tokens in Ava and check price, borrow, and the other information. This website is made in WebAssembly and the only use on chain data. Thanks to Shilling, it's possible to find world prices. And it's possible to import internal JSON files to create a custom list of tokens. In the future, I want to add support to VRS and Chain Link Market. I want to continue to work on these plugins to help Node.NET developers use other and and improve the website, better design, and cache system to speed up the log time. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hello, any sudden question? Any question? Um, yeah. I, I, I'm, this is quite interesting. I'm, I'm curious, you know, how much more work do you think, you know, you could uh, put in? It's possible. I think the other video started playing. Oh, good. Um, yeah, no, hey, Lucas, I was wondering, like, you know, how much more work do, needs to be put into this project before maybe uh, this can be kind of leveraged, like, by uh, the existing developer ecosystem? Yes, it's my idea. My disability for .NET, um, it's possible to use .NET in games, mobile, uh, but I don't have time to uh, continue to, to improve this plugin yet. Sorry, I'm very bad speaking public. I'm very nervous. I have oh, problem with it. No, that's no, fine. We, this is yeah, this is great. Totally understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can totally understand you. Um, and yeah, I think it's a great project. Obviously, 
chain or, or on-chain prices are super, super important. Oracles are super important. I actually have an ignorant question. I don't know what um, what you what you ported it into. You said dot is it dot net? Is that what you said? Like I actually don't know what that is. Yes, dot net platform building building Microsoft. Okay. It's working Windows games and got it. The main language is C sharp. Got it. Okay. Uh, that's helpful for me. But this is yeah. I, I think solving the Oracle problem is always always a hard problem to solve. So anything you can do to help out with that is really awesome. Thank you. Um, I want to improve. I do not have time, but I really want to work Chainlink. Uh, it's so hard for me to do strings in Chainlink. For it's online, I have JavaScript and Python libraries. Yeah. And the other, uh, I, I do not have, I have libraries in JavaScript and what's language. So you have your job, Nava pra, for JavaScript. Uh, I want to talk Nava for using games for leverage tokens, but I have two weeks to work this. Um, yeah, I do not have to say what, what to say. Sorry, I'm very nervous. I, it's my first day, Hackathon. What were like, uh, what's like the main challenge that you uh, dealt with building this project? My main challenge is not to have a good day in Fiesta Week. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well, congrats on, uh, on uh, doing this and uh, hopefully you got to learn some new things. And uh, it seems like there's a lot of things on your list to, to add in the future to this project. So, um, we're looking forward to on our side to seeing uh, what you build from uh, from here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, great work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I hope speaking better in auto auto presentation. Absolutely, it was, it was really great. And uh, thank you. Thank you. To reach out to us for more help. Thank. You. Amazing. So um, we have two more projects to go, um, and uh, next up we have. Abe was going to be talking about the Abe V2 user retention dashboard. So Abe, whenever you're ready, feel free to share your video. Is uh, my video visible? Yes. Yep. The global project is Abe V2 user retention dashboard. There are three components in it uh, uh, while populating the data. So data is pulled from uh, AVB2 subgraph and uh, transformed into PostgreSQL uh, tables. On those tables, uh, SQL joins and queries has been created, which and uh, using those queries, uh, the dashboard and the chart is built. There are three major features uh, on the dashboard. Uh, so uh, at the top, aggregation metrics uh, are, uh, are displayed. For example, total number of unique users who have made transactions, total transactions done by users. That uh, user retention chart uh, uh, is, a, is the second part of dashboard where user retention analysis has been done. Uh, the, this helps us understand which features makes user happy. Uh, so let's say if a feature is uh, uh, released in a particular week and a lot of new users has joined, then that means there is a good impact uh, uh, of that features uh, on the user. The third part is funnel analysis. So funnel analysis, in funnel analysis, uh, you can track user quick progress through different stages, and identify where, in which uh, stage user drop, pop, drop rate is high. And uh, so marketing team or the team can analyze uh, uh, those categories, those stages, and take actions based on that. Uh, I'll take directly on the dashboard. So here is the live AVV2 dashboard. So at the top, we can see AVV2, uh, like the aggregation met metrics. So there is total user transactions, unique users. So there are around 11,543 
uh, unique users who have made transaction. Out of that, uh, uh, there are around 10K plus users who have made repeat transactions. And these are like uh, 1.7K users who have made 10K uh, transactions. Similarly, like 765 users have made 20K transactions. The second part is user retention cohort analysis. So uh, the Aave protocol, uh, V2 protocol was launched in November, like in week of November 30 and December 6. So that is uh, cohort one, then cohort two, cohort three. So, be, so subsequent weeks are, are assigned a cohort. Now here we can see that in the first week, 842 users had signed up. Out of that, uh, so week one he one here is like December to seven to December thirty. So around thirty percent users have made uh, made activity and transactions. Uh, like out of eight forty two, thirty percent have made uh, uh, activity. In week two, it is twenty one percent. In week three, it is eighteen percent. And subsequently, like in week ten, which is the last week, there are like zero point zero two users have shown activity. Uh, say. In week five and week six, we can see there is good uh, uh, there is good number of users uh, who have made activity. So, in week five, around one like one point six k users have new users have signed up. Out of that, in subsequent week, around thirty eight percent have made uh, uh, activity, which is a good number. Then in further like uh, weeks, it's twenty three percent, sixteen percent. So, th so th uh, this tells us that in week of uh, December to January three, there is some uh, there's some like feature releases or there's some uh, uh, there's some marketing uh, action has been taken which has increased uh, signups. <clears throat> the next part of dashboard is uh, funnel analysis based on user transaction. So, uh, so. There are different categories: user with two plus transaction, user with four plus transactions, user with eight plus transactions. So we can see that uh, there are like 10.4 k users with two plus transactions. Uh, there are around 62 percent of users who who have done four plus transactions. There are around like uh, 10 percent users who have made uh, 16 plus transactions. Uh, so there are like uh, mini whales and whales. So mini whales uh, are around four percent who have done thirty-two plus transactions, and uh, around one percent users have made sixty-four plus transactions, which, which is like kind of uh, whales. Yeah. So this is the dashboard, uh, and uh, it tells a lot about uh, user retention. I've also uh, uh, created GitHub repo with uh, updated README and. Uh, uh, the importance of cohort and funnel analysis. Uh, so yeah, here is the data. Yeah, so that's it from my side. Let me know for any questions. Thank you. Pretty cool. Yeah. After oh, build, yeah. Uh, after building this dashboard, uh, I'm curious. Like, what's one thing you kind of like picked up on, uh, or, or learn about Ave that you that may have surprised you before? Uh, uh, so, so like overall, I learned a lot about, uh, uh, the Aave entities and the thing which sur surprised me, which I also mentioned in my uh, presentation is, uh, I mean, so in the week or in the cohort five and six, you can see there is a huge, there is a huge spike in new users. So when I, uh, when I talked to the team and asked like, why, I mean, what is the reason for that? So they specified like uh, there were some new features or there are some marketing campaigns from that side that went way that went from their side and that that brought like new users uh, uh, on their on their platform. So basically uh, the, the cohort analysis, it, it tells a lot about uh, the growth of your product, the impact of uh, new features uh, on your platform. Yeah. So. Uh, so basically, the I mean that week uh, I actually discussed with the team to and learned more about their activity. Very cool. Yeah, great job. Um, so, so is this? Uh, I guess I'm. Did you did you like the the 
did you build the tool to create the visualizations or did you use a, di a different tool for that and then import the data? Yeah, so uh, I actually, I uh, wrote uh, type scripts, I mean, type script uh, uh, scripts to populate the data from uh, subgraph. So there are like entities, subgraph, swaps. Uh, okay. so use used to uh, like I wrote the script to populate that data into three different tables in Postgres cohort cohort uh, so table one is cohort cohort table two is cohort base values which is the new users and cohort three is cohort metric values values so uh, and based on these three tables I created uh, uh, like joins uh, in the query and created like a uh, uh, temporary table uh, uh, in the in the SQL query to pop to Got populate it. to populate this chart, yeah, and the chart uh, like uh, the chart is not I mean the uh, chart like it I mean, there, there's some library npm library is used to create the visualization, but all the data population and uh, the table population is uh, by the scripts. Got it. Yeah, I think it's the. Uh... Pretty cool. It's always nice to see visualization, especially like on the blockchain. Everything's public, but like there's too much data, right? It's like a fire hose. Um, I'm curious, are you planning to uh, do more? Like, what's your plan with this, basically? Yeah, so there are uh, two, uh, ne like two next steps for uh, which uh, uh, after discussing with the team, I came to know one is they want a cohort for deposit amount. So this is the cohort for new users, but the next is depo uh, like deposit. So how new, how the yeah, users, cool. yeah, how users are performing uh, on week by week basis based on like how much they are de depositing amount. So that is uh, uh, that is a different type of cohort where we'll be showing I'll be showing like USD values uh, 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 on week by week basis. And next uh, uh, the next part is I think so uh, a lot of DeFi projects. I mean, they have a lot of data, but uh, they don't have a way to uh, repre like analyze uh, analyze using this kind of cohort. So, I mean, I was surprised to note that Aave, which is a huge project, doesn't I mean doesn't have a dashboard with uh, with this cohort analysis. So, what uh, uh, my what my thinking is like make this tool available for general like general public. So, any any project who has a uh, uh, like big amount of data. Uh, they can like they can uh, connect their subgraph and uh, I mean this and this uh, cohort and funnel will be populated automatically. So I mean that's but, the second step. Second step. Layton, do you guys have a something like this for pull together? No, this would be cool. We definitely would want to use something like this. It'd be cool. Very cool. Nice. Yeah, I'm sure you could like shop this around to all the DAOs like on their proposal pages. Be like, hey, I can do some cohort analysis yeah. for you. Get like a grant yeah, for each. For sure. For sure. Especially for pull together retention and cohort analysis actually is good because you want to see a, a retention. Yeah. So yeah. Be a fun one for you to tackle if you want to work on this more a bit. So uh, yeah. great. Yeah, sure. Congrats uh, for, for demoing and, and uh, showing us what you did. And it seems like there's a lot of interesting insights that will be useful for not just Alvin, but also future D5 protocols here. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, sure. With that, yeah, we, ready for our last demo for today. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thank you. Nice work. And that is Project Refungible Estate. So I see you, Sagar, already here. Um, so whenever you are ready, I think we're waiting for one more. Yeah, yeah, I'm just waiting for my friend. Uh, he'll be joining soon. We'll be there. Just, yeah, just a minute, guys. And whenever you're ready, we can uh, kick off with the video. Um, Maybe he has some issues. Kartik, can can you, you know, put the video? I'll share you the link right now. Oh, oh, he's here. So, uh, looks like the audio isn't coming through. Would you mind ensuring that the audio checkbox is? Yeah, just give me a minute. Yeah, we are really extremely sorry to just we have uh, changed the machines. Okay.
uh, so guys, I'm not able to see the checkbox for enabling the sound of my machine. Uh, that's okay. What I'll do is I'll, if it's the same video from your submission, I'll just play it on my side and uh, we'll just go from there. Yeah, great. Thanks. Cool. Project is refungible state. Just give me one second. All right, so I will kick this off and uh, we're, we'll do our last demo for today. So, our project is refungible state. Refungible state is a game where, where a person can sell, sell, loan, rent his, rent his virtual land. And, on blockchain so this project aims to explain how powerful a blockchain can can be in terms of real estate management so we have used react and 3js as a front end and solidity ethereum as a back end so we have tried to give it as a um, minecraft type of theme or ui right so this is how a um, voxel painter looks like here you can see a single blocks represent a square feet on the land so which can be traded between the users and users can so a, a person can create this land and save it and feels you're saving it or saving out the mongodb atlas and this data is then very has a crucial data come like square feet area price per square feet rent and all this data is uh, used for for the trading of the land so we have created our own external adapter so and uh, i must say this data is off chain so which is in mongodb at last we need it in our contract so we have created our own chaining adapter so and for and this adapter is being uh, hosted by a node operator and and we get a crucial data such as the square feet and all into our contracts uh, we can see uh, like um, we have made a request to our our API consumer and got the crucial square feet area from the uh, uh, on the basis of uh, token ID and we have then uh, minted a uh, number of tokens among the uh, among this square feet data so we have created a new concept like RFT RFT is like if you see NFT NFT a person can only trade it boldly either you buy it vote or you don't so we have created somewhat like rft so rfts are like uh, where a nft can be uh, sold traded in fraction and erc20 token so a single erc20 token uh, represents a share um, share of the of the nft so, so there we can see it's an nft so we have used some then nft address token address uh, which can be bought partially so uh, how this is done is like um, it is backed by an erc20 token and yeah. so here we can see so i have bought a share in this nft i'll like i have bought some two two per two share uh we'll see how much shares a person has so this to this erc20 token can be termed as a foldable token which represents a person's share on their land so the this uh, this thing like uh, each and every square feet is been marked by a block id like consider this as block one and block id two so this person has bought some uh, two shares of uh, from the land and those are block one and two and so he has two tokens which represent that this person has a share on the uh, has a share on the land so person can build a business upon the land and uh, and, and the business basically represent a project of a user for example and which he can be used to advertise or market his project or whatever so uh, but the business holder business owner has to pay a monthly rent and that rent is divided among all the shareholders of the land and the shareholders like in terms of uh, i have two shares so i will be getting a uh, two percent from the water the water the rent the person has been uh, so 10 g also so the concept is like that uh, are we are the land uh, land keeper uh, land keeper the, which adds uh, adds an extra weight to the uh, implemented successfully we have just tried to mimic it like with the shop.fesor.io agriculture.fesor.sol 
and we have created our own custom uh, yield farming type of model where a person takes a uh, ghost token and uh, earns ghost token and they want the Avegoji owner uh, can de uh, determine how much of the cut he will take of the reward and this reward is being generated uh, only be issued from the game admins as well only so the, uh, the concept is like Avegoji maintains a cleanliness code so uh, if a whenever person creates an Avegoji on his land and interacts with it so we increase the uh, cleanliness score of the that person's profile and then uh, that which, which is mapped to the address and then the person when next time uh, tries to buy another land he, he may he or she may get some discount or something uh, which is not yet fixed though so um, that's what we have chain link um, credit delegation where a person can loan his uh, land for color uh, uh, sorry, collateralize his land for loans and etc. So we have properly uh, explained a fully functional prototype as the video was too big so we have to cut short some parts of it and then these are the links to it where we can show here we show the fully pro uh, working prototype of the defensive estate and here is the fully uh, working prototype of credit delegation so I will just explain what credit delegation uh, in a concept is like a person can um, get some loans uh, on behalf um, on the on basis of his land or his project of the business holder holder and the borrower can lend him lend him to, uh, so we are even thinking of implementing an escrow system Great. Awesome. You can jump in. Oh, You're yeah, muted. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Good work. This is yeah. a creative project. It's interesting. Uh, it's cool. It's a cool idea. Um, what yeah. actually? Was curious. What was your What was your inspiration for it? Uh, to be honest, uh, I have a friend in obviously Rajasthan. So he ha he ha owns a palace. So, but the thing is, they are not able to maintain it because it's too expensive for them. So they are yeah. looking for investor for them. So their investor or they can uh, buy some shares of the uh, what you say that palace and convert into it a five star hotel. So I was thinking like that. If I can represent yeah. the building in the voxel painter, we have made it by React three years, and then a person can buy some share and whatever the monthly yield from the hotels and all, we can distribute it uh, properly among themselves. But the thing was, it has some lots of legal issues. So, and uh, like we are freshly out of college and we don't have much of the experience in blockchain. But uh, so I thought just like, you know, let me make a game into it. So let, uh, let me and the user themselves understand how the real estate management can be done in the blockchain side. And then later we can move it to real world. Uh, so. Gotcha. Very cool. Yeah. I see Thank a you. huge Minecraft node. So like, I, this is like <laughs> I've been waiting for the okay. moment where like crypto hits uh -huh. Minecraft. Like Minecraft yeah, is yeah. open, you know, open source, entirely moddable world. With, you know, it's own crazy, you know, servers and economies, right? So like, like yeah. if you yeah. deploy this uh, live somewhere or like deploy in a server, like please yeah. hit me up. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah, surely, but uh, we are hoping if someone can help us with mentorship and all like we have not that experience but we are ready eager to learn and this is our first obviously uh, hackathon so <laughs> we can create a server like currently the uh, we can create a land and we can store it on the local storage but we have made it uh, to store that contract in mongodb at last and we are fetching the data from mongodb at last into a smart contract to chain link so we can do that the users can come in and share their what you say uh, designs of the land and we can store it so and uh, the the whole land is an ERC 721, and uh, the it is and some fractions of square uh, meter is ERC 20. Though. So we are making like some ERC 20 token backed by ERC 20. So we have some idea and all. <laughs> That's it. Awesome stuff. <laughs> Thank you. You mentioned the, uh, the yeah. like collateralize. You use your blocks as collateral. Can you elaborate a bit more on, on how that would okay, work? Okay, Specifically like the pricing, like, pricing of okay, it? Okay, so when you buy a square feet of land, you, you give some, some amount of ether. So each and every uh, block of land uh, costs some ether. So. so what we are thinking like a business holder, say like there, we saw in YouTube some, there are some technical indicators, uh, what we say YouTuber, they share their technical ind indicators 
and then earn uh, some part of the profit. So, so we were thinking like, if possible, a business holder can uh, say that, uh, please guys follow my technical integrator strategies and all, and then later, uh, whatever. So um, I have so much uh, estimation that I can earn this much, uh, some amount of value from a trade or whatever. So he can uh, have an escrow system. He'll uh, loan his land, his land and ask for a uh, loan and with our credit delegation, uh, we'll show it in a table like a table format where a person is uh, uh, renting, uh, loaning his land and with some amount of uh, allocate, uh, what we say, amount uh, he wants as a loan. So a person will go, okay, I am uh, delegating him the loan. He will uh, take the loan behalf of that user and send that um, amount to the uh, the person, the land owner, the block owner, and uh, then he can, uh, like we'll uh, keep some 30 days of, um, uh, what we say, uh, if he is not able to repay the loan and the uh, interest in 30 days, the land will be open to sale again. And when the land gets sold again, whatever the money comes, we'll do, uh, to the, uh, the person who delegated will give it to him. So then he can swap it and uh, pay his debt and get it a token back from him. So that I was see. our concept. Did you learn about all of this just in the last three weeks? Uh, so I'm I'm being honest though, uh, our project is not completed yet. yet. So as for part is left, but uh, we have made the almost, we, I can say 80% of backend is done. And the UI part like Ave Gochi and the front end uh, so, uh, is done, but uh, land selling and all for the UI is not done yet. It's in remix yet. So, and yeah, we have done this all in this last week. So. Amazing. Well, yeah. uh, Yash Sagar, thanks so much for presenting. It was a really cool okay. app. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So, uh, so uh, <laughs> last project for uh, for today, and uh, this is uh, kind of us wrapping up uh, this judging. So, before I kind of say goodbye to everybody, I want to thank uh, our three judges, Layton, Peter, and Daniel, for giving us the past oh. couple of rules, uh, on their side today, and uh, and uh, really appreciate all the feedback that you've given to all of our teams and uh i want to make sure that uh, you also have a chance to uh kind of uh really uh, uh help you find this valuable i know we had a chance to kind of look at some interesting ideas and concepts so uh, thanks yeah. and uh before we uh end this i want to also give a special shout out to andy and jenny who have been making all of this work in the back end uh, our volunteers and making sure everything is smooth so andy yeah thanks again for, thank you guys uh, making this uh, run super smoothly. Um, really appreciate all, yeah. the, and all the background work to make this uh, great. So uh, thanks again. Um, we'll be able to announce everything uh, tomorrow for our finalists and uh, please tune in for the ETH Market Make uh, finale on uh, on Thursday uh, at 9 a.m. Pacific. So with that, I'd like to uh, close this off and uh, thanks everybody who uh, stuck around and watched the rest of the demos. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you guys. See ya.